what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so this will be a spoiler free review for it's a wonderful knife which is coming to us directed by tyler mcintyre and pinned by michael kennedy it is starring jane woodup jess mccloyd joel McHale, Catherine isabel william davis and justin long this film revolves around the character of Winnie Carruthers, who saved her town, the idyllic Angel Falls, from a psychotic killer on Christmas Eve one year previously. But after wishing she had never been born, she finds herself in an alternate universe in which she doesn't exist, allowing the killer to roam free. Now, a lot of you have been dying to hear my thoughts on this film ever since I watched it a few weeks ago at this point. I will say this. It's a Wonderful Knife. Is camp done right? Is it perfect? No. But this blood salt spin on a Christmas classic or Shrek Forever After, because it does remind me of Shrek at times, whichever one this reminds you of more, this film filmed my heart or filled my heart with holiday cheer. Borrowing from what worked in Freaky, Michael Kennedy serves up a final girl that is easy to invest in and root for immediately upon meeting her. Winnie Carruthers isn't enjoying life a year after saving her town from a corrupt, power-hungry individual. Her family and everyone else around her has moved on, but the trauma of last year and her personal losses from that uh, from that event have her flabbergasted at how everyone's everyone is able to just act as if nothing happened while she's still just, of course, stuck in the past and still very much so it, impacted by all of this. She's convinced it would be better if she was never born and time spent in an alternate reality convinces her that she is more than wrong. So while the screenplay isn't the most original piece out there, the familiar territory wasn't a lackluster affair overall. Sure, Winnie has family I couldn't care less about like Kate Roberts in Scream 4 but quadruple it. But Winnie's blossoming relationship with a character I believe named Bernie, or she's like an outcast sort of, who is an outcast sort of character was more than enough for me to garner, or more than enough to garner my interest in Winnie and her route, her arc, and her connection, that relationship she's blo having blossom with uh, the character named Bernie. Admittedly, there are some things about corruption and greed that I feel weren't fully explored to the, to the best of their ability which would have enhanced the villains of this story and added more to Winnie's frustration she has towards the elitists in her town. It's there, and I'm kind of on board, but I just wasn't completely on board with her in that regard because of the, because of the fact that the film didn't flesh those themes out well enough for me. Some of the lines can be cheesy, and yes, you have exposition dumping, but it wasn't done in the state the obvious sort of fashion, which is great because I'm not a complete idiot, and I cannot stand when films treat their viewers as though you can't catch on to what is happening. So job well done to It's a Wonderful Knife. The kills are pretty standard, not very memorable. A few were cringy, to be honest, specifically one with a candy cane because of the visual effects, but one sequence that concluded with an axe being plunged into someone's face, I think it's highlighted in the trailer actually, that was easily the standout for me thanks to the choice of music that was accompanying this sequence as well. There's a nod to Screen 2 in the screenplay that was very funny, along with some other lines from Kennedy just who's just wearing his scream heart, scream heart on his sleeve in this screenplay. I will say that the reveal also was a little underwhelming, nor... Not that it didn't make sense, but it, it just didn't feel like a betrayal worth getting up in arms about. It's someone who just was one of the paper thin characters I referenced, so I wasn't all that invested in their reveals or their motives. Performances are wonderful. Justin Long continues to be a master at portraying an insufferable but intriguing person like he does in Barbarian, and Jane Woodup brings our final girl to life with enough conviction for me to feel sympathetic towards Winnie's situation. All of the performances were solid, but I'd give the advantage to those two I just mentioned. Just to circle back to the screenplay really quick, I do think that the whodunit aspect of it all just fell a little flat due to the characters being thin as hell and not worth caring who the killer was by the end of it all. Despite that, what really just won me over was what was being done with Winnie and the humor and the heart of it all of the screenplay. That's what really ended up winning me over in the long run when it came to the screenplay for It's a Wonderful Knife. It has fine pacing. The cinematography I thought was decent enough. I have seen the, the remarks about this looking like a car ad. <laughs> that while that's funny, I, you know, I've seen so much, so many terrible films. One in particular I'm thinking of where you look like you have an unrendered gameplay as your backdrop. I didn't take much issue with the cinematography in this film. Uh, thought it had solid direction overall for the most part. I would give It's a Wonderful Knife a 6.5. 6.7 out of 10. I enjoyed it for what it was. I had fun with it. I could see myself revisiting this every Christmas season uh, just as a fun slasher 
to enjoy around Christmas time. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, name this video in the description. I'll have links on my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know any movies, news, or reviews you'll have me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.